Hello there, my fellow nerdy battle brothers, and welcome back to another video on the Space Marine Chapters lore. For today we arrive at episode number 3 on the unique and rather untraditional chapter known as the Tome Keepers. We already talked about who these fellows are and what their unique traits are, so today I thought I could tell you some of their war stories and campaigns that they took part in. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Sometime in M33, following a series of raids by the Eldar craft world of Biltan, the Tome Keepers joined an Imperial Crusade into the segment of Tempestus to try to hunt down and destroy the craft world. They battled the elusive aliens across a dozen star systems, and they were dragged into conflicts with several other aliens in the process. After becoming embroiled in a three year long war with a nascent orc empire, the Imperials abandoned the hunt for Biltan and disbanded. The Tome Keepers did make detailed notes on the enemy, vowing never again to be tricked by the elusive Eldar. The munitions world of 56 Kappa Munita was the scene of the first large scale martial engagement of the Tome Keepers in 228 M34. The planet sat just outside of the predicted path of Wa Gobrok, which had already smashed into two subsectors. By conducting a series of fleet based actions, the Tome Keepers were able to lure Gobrok's ramshackle starships towards 56 Kappa Munita and then engage them on the planet's surface. Although greatly outnumbered, the Tome Keepers fought only on their own terms, ambushing enemy columns, making fighting retreats, and always occupying the higher ground. Obi-Wan would be proud. Growing even more angry at the evasive enemy, the Warlord Gobrok conducted an all-out attack on the planet's city-sized munition storage facility, into which he had seen the Tome Keepers retreat. But that was exactly what the Tome Keepers wanted. Having already evacuated the facility workers, they detonated the explosives they'd planted and blew Gobrok and the majority of his WA to smithereens. At another unknown date in M34, on the lightning reefed planet of Yogg, Librarian Artax discovered that he could physically transmit the voices of others, enabling the company's orator to be heard over the planet's violent electric storms. All future librarians were taught this ability upon their induction into the librarius of the chapter. Once again in M34, we have the massacre in Black Gulch. On the dark moon of Fainor, a squad of Tome Keepers were assaulted by an enemy that appeared to be made of pure shadow. As they were picked off one by one and dragged into the darkness, the two surviving brothers entered the phosphor mines of Black Gulch, drawing the enemy in with them. Trapped in the darkness, they ignited the phosphor dust, revealing a nest of Dark Eldar mandrakes. Although almost blinded, the space marines finally overcame the aliens, who had nowhere left to hide in the searing light. Between M35 and M36, the Ur Council of Nova Terra denounced the High Lords of Terra and claimed the rule over the Segmentum Pacificus, plunging the Imperium into civil war. The Tome Keepers were among the chapters sent to quell the rebellion, which lasted almost 900 years. It was during this time that great injustices were wrought upon the civilian population of the Imperium both by the renegades and the ecclesiarchal armies that were supposedly sworn to protect them. Although they prosecuted their wars efficiently and pragmatically, the Tome Keepers were left disillusioned by the conflict. And speaking of being disillusioned, this next one made it even worse. This is the Sanctimonia Conflict in 291 M37. At this date, the ecclesiarchal world of Sanctimonia was overrun by the forces of Chaos. Within just a few months, the entire sector was ablaze with the taint of Chaos. The Tome Keepers responded to the calls for aid, along with a Black Templar's Crusade, two convents of the Adepta Sororitas Sisters of Battle, and eight Imperial Guard regiments. And thus they began a campaign to cleanse the fallen worlds. 
The first signs of discord among the Allied forces occurred on the hive world of Gleb when Canon Estofira, a vehement witch hater from the Order of the Argent Shroud, balked at the presence of the Tome Keeper's chief librarian Eshud and his retinue of librarians. Her distrust of the psychers led to a much higher casualty rate than expected, particularly when telepathic communications from Eshu were ignored by the ecclesiarchal forces. Less than a year later, on the shrine world of Bespax, the Tome Keepers under the command of Captain Saduk were forced to destroy the Mausoleum Divinito, a vast crypt containing the bodies of over 300 Imperial Martyrs, when a warp portal was opened inside it by a conclave of sorcerers. Angered by this unholy act of desecration, the Adeptus Benestorum was angered even more when Saduk pointed out that the entombed had already been martyred once and that a second time would not bother them too much. On the civilized world of happenstance, the Tome Keepers were to join three Defon Imperial Guard regiments in a combined assault on a heretic-held city. The Imperial Guard, who were accompanied by Simonius Falk, Cardinal Palatine of Sanctimonia, were to engage the enemy defenses, while the Tome Keepers conducted a dropout assault on the command position. When the city came in sight, however, Falk ordered the Imperial Guard to advance immediately and slaughter the enemy in the name of the Emperor. He disregarded the battle plan devised by the Tome Keepers, deeming their prudence and caution to be a lack of faith in the Emperor's protection and divine guidance. And thus, the Defan regiments were almost wiped to a man as they launched their attack, and the Tome Keepers were forced to abort their own mission to extract them. The chapter decried Falk's disregard for human life, and in return Falk accused them of dereliction of duty. The final blow came when the Tome Keepers joined the assault on Sanctimonia itself. As they attacked the holy capital city, the Black Templars and the Sisters of Battle made no distinction between the heretics and the civilians, deeming that a solar decade spent on a chaos-held planet would be enough to taint everyone. Although the actions proved to be prudent in the aftermath, the Tome Keepers could not forgive their allies for what they saw as wanton butchery and the slaughter of potential innocents. The Tome Keepers departed Sanctimonia on difficult terms with both the Black Templars and the Ecclesiarchy. Although the Adeptus Astartes are not bound by ecclesiarchal law, nor required to follow its teachings, the Tome Keepers found themselves unfairly vilified by other Imperial organizations in the wake of that campaign. It seems combat competence is not allowed in the Ecclesiarchy. Between 746 and 759 M41, the Tome Keepers were dispatched to Nova Terra again, where they would join the Iron Knights chapter in the pacification of a rebellion led by one Constantinus formerly of the Sons of Gilliman chapter. So great was this former Space Marine's heresy that the entire sector was eventually plunged into open war for 13 years. At an unknown date in M41, having eradicated the Orcs in the Hieraki Deeps, the Necrons of the Tokt dynasty began attacking Imperial planets. The 3rd, 4th and 9th companies of the Tome Keepers joined the Skitari legions of the world of Stygis VIII and the titans of the Legio Honorum to defend it. It was during this time that the chapter suffered great losses, including several warships and a large number of armored vehicles. Despite many requests for aid, the Tome Keepers and the Stygians were left to prosecute the war on their own. The Necrons, relentless in their pursuit of reconquest, continue the expansion of their empire to this day. It was at the end of M41 that Abaddon launched his 13th Black Crusade. Chapter Master Sargon Bal Zakir led every warrior he could spare from the depleted chapter ranks towards the Eye of Terror in a bid to aid the Imperial forces. His fleet of ships arrived too late to join the war around Cadia, though but they did aid in the defense of Chincare and Agrippina. More than a hundred battle brothers were lost defending the forge world of Agrippina, while those fighting on Chincare were virtually wiped out by the demons of Nurgle. Although the losses were a severe blow to the chapter, many more worlds would have fallen without the chapter's intervention. 
Another significant event from the end of the 41st millennium was the so-called Night of a Thousand Rebellions. Entire swathes of the Segmentum Pacificus fell to insurrection, as chaos calls popped up on dozens of worlds. Captain Anasar led the Tome Keepers under Strength 5th Company to the world of Calix 6, which had been taken over by the Slaneshi pleasure cult of Vorlak the Everblind. A dropout assault by the Tome Keepers made quick work of the cult hierarchy, but the battle was far from done. Guided by the scent of ecstatic death, demon heads and fiends of Slaanesh went through the gossamer thin veil between worlds and assailed the Tome Keeper brothers. Although the warp rift was sealed eventually and the demons banished, over 40 Tome Keepers were killed, Captain Anasar among them. As the Noctis Eterna following the birth of the Great Rift plunged the galaxy into darkness, the somnolent seers of Istroma began to record the strange dreams experienced by the planet's inhabitants. Thousands of disturbing accounts were recorded before the Librarium of the Tome Keepers realized the peril and intervened. The dream diaries were gathered up and burned, although it is rumored that some were saved from the flames. As the pyres burned away to ash, the Great Scar, the Cicatrix Maledictum, could be seen splitting the galaxy. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Tome Keepers and some of their known campaigns and war stories for today. Definitely a chapter that went through a lot and probably could have used a bit more recognition. But then again, common sense is not something often used in the Imperium's military. I think I am gonna make a fourth and final episode on these fellows, maybe with a focus on notable characters or heroes of the chapter next time. What about you though? What are your thoughts in these war stories of the chapter? Did you know about any of these events? What would you have done differently in that Ecclesiarchian Black Templars campaign? Do share your thoughts in the comments below if you want. If you thought that the episode was informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot and have an awesome and healthy day. The Emperor protects.